Welcome uh, to the 2015 TFAP Day of Panels at the Museum of Arts and Design. I'm Connie Tell, the director of the Feminist Art Project and the newly named Women and the Arts Collaborative at Rutgers University. I have the great pleasure of managing the Feminist Art Project and bringing the TFAP Day of Panels back to the Museum of Arts and Design once again. Uh, and Matt has generously donated this theater for our use, so we're very thankful. Uh, and there's more. <laughs> the museum has also, whoops, here it is, has kindly provided everyone with this special sticker, so don't lose it, and it gives you free entrance to the museum for today. So if you'd like to wander and see the museum, please wear your sticker. Um, we thank Mad for welcoming us so graciously. Now I'd like to applaud. Uh, standing beside me, I'd like to introduce Jake Yusna, the Director of Public Programs at the Museum of Arts and Design. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll make this brief since we don't want to have a thousand introductions. Um, I just want to thank everyone at the Feminist Art Project, all of the volunteers, all of the panelists, moderators. It is a impressively talented and amazing team behind this entire day of what will, I'm sure, be really engaging, interesting, and hopefully slightly provocative discussions. Um, I always like to say I like to see a fight on a stage. <laughs> Both intellectual or physical, I'm okay with that. Um, I just want to let everyone know that uh, Connie did mention that the sticker you got gets you into the galleries. Um, we have on the, uh, display right now new territories, um, laboratories for design, art, and craft in Latin America. It's a survey show by our chief curator, Lowry Stokes Sims, that looks at different cities across Latin America as sort of laboratories for almost like uh, incubation for new forms of cultural production, both in design, craft, and the arts, and a lot of different sort of cross-disciplinary possibilities in there. Uh, that is on the second, fourth, and fifth floor. And then also on the second floor, we have a show of the work by uh, Joyce J. Scott, who's quite often referred to as a bead artist, but she would say her work is much larger than that, and I would have to tend to agree with her. Um, she does, she's a Baltimore native and does performance, jewelry, um, sculptures, a whole mix of stuff. She is a real uh, funky lady, and I think she keeps that Baltimore uh, style very much alive. Uh, and that's also on our second floor. And then on our sixth floor, I hope you stop by, which is our education center and our open studios, where there are artists working uh, with the doors open that you can stop in and see their work and discuss what they're up to. Uh, I just want to let you know about one exhibition we have coming up this summer, <laughs> our largest exhibition. Um, Opening at the end of April, the 28th, is called Pathmakers, Women in Art, Craft, and Design, Mid-Century Today. And it looks at the uh, pioneering kind of breakthrough professionalism and entrepreneurship that we saw for women in craft uh, and its influence into art and design in the mid-century after World War II. But then also we'll have a floor of contemporary work looking at how far um, things have grown or not grown since that time period. And we're doing a few panels, three panels in conjunction with that exhibition as well. On May 7th, we're doing one called Do We Need Exhibitions Just for Women? Examining the Specialization of Exhibitions by Gender. And then on the 21st of May, we're doing Women in Industrial Design, A Changing Field, and that's a changing field with a question mark. Uh, all that information is on our website. And so I hope you stop back and I'd like to turn it back over to Connie. Very, very brief. Uh, first order of business is everyone please turn off your electronic devices so we aren't interrupting anybody. I'm not even sure I did mine. Would you mind turning off my phone? <laughs> please, or I'll do it when I sit down. Um, so first uh, announcement I'd like to make is that uh, in 2016, the Feminist Art Project will be 10 years old, and which is really a milestone for us and a great achievement. Thanks to all of you and thank you. Um, and the Day of Panels are going to be held uh, at the National Museum of Women in the Arts uh, because the College Art Association will be in DC, so that's where we will be. Very excited about it, and we're gonna have a party. So look for details. Uh, don't know yet, but you'll, we'll know in the fall, so look for <laughs> details about that. Um, so it takes many people contributing their time and expertise to produce uh, an, uh, an event such as this, and I'd like to publicly thank a few. Kathleen Lewis, Jake Yusna from the Museum of Arts and Design, John Carnes, our AV liaison, and the AV techs for the day, Andy and Mel, up above, Joe Nanishi, who's our videographer, uh, Patricia Munoz, who is photographing, I don't even see her. 
You're here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there she is. Jeff Nathanson, our timekeeper, um, and especially the women of the uh, women in the arts collab, the staff, excuse me, of the women in the arts collaborative, and the feminist art project. Nicole Inazelli, Lee Passamano, and Gabriella Shapula. Uh, and also a very special thanks to our volunteers uh, who are uh, giving up their Saturday mornings and Saturday afternoons to help us, uh, and especially Jacqueline Ferrant. I don't see her in the room, but she's the volunteer coordinator, and she's really done an extraordinary job. Um, I'd like to thank the College Art Association, the National Council, uh, sorry, New Jersey State Council on the Arts, Rutgers University, and Whole Foods Market at Columbus Circle for their generous support of this program and the Feminist Art Project. I want to acknowledge some special people in our audience. Ferris Olin and Judith Brodsky, founding co-directors of the Institute for Women in Art and the Feminist Art Project. Please acknowledge Uh, I do not see her here yet, but I'd like to recognize Isabel Nazario, who is the Associate Vice President in the Office of Institutional Diversity and Inclusion, my boss, at Rutgers, uh, whose support of our programs is invaluable and very much appreciated. And a special shout out to Alyssa Author. Is she here? She's not here yet. Well, she used to be the Feminist Art Project Regional Coordinator for Colorado, but I'm happy to tell you, January 1st, she came to MAD. So I just wanted to give her a congratulations. She is the Wingate Research Curator. So congratulations, Alyssa, wherever you are. Um, inside your programs, you will see an evaluation form. Uh, please fill it out, hand it to the door monitors, or bring it back upstairs. Any, all of it, we really need the information. Um, it helps us report to our grantors, and also we want your feedback about our programming. So please, um, please fill that out and, and return it to us. Um, and that's it. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce this year's TFAP Day of Panels co-coordinators, Damali Abrams, Jen Deerdorf, and Kathleen Wentrack. Welcome. We are thrilled that today has finally arrived after all of the work that we've put into it. When we began discussing our interest in the TFAP Day of Panels two years ago, the topic of collectives and collaboration seemed natural and timely. Damali and Jen had both been involved with collectives or cooperative spaces, and I was developing a book project on women's art collectives. While collectives and collaborative working methodologies have played a significant role in art produced by women since at least the 1960s, this area of activity has received little attention in the numerous recent exhibitions on feminist art, with the exception of perhaps Carrie Lovelace's show, Making It Together at the Bronx Museum of Arts in 2008. Another framing circumstance is the resurgence of collaborative practice in art since the late 1990s, based on economic, social, political, and artistic concerns. Hello. Uh, so the Day of Panels will focus on collaborative working methodologies and the crucial role of women's collectives among feminist art practice since the 1970s. As feminist art project practice continues to evolve, collaboration and collectivity continue to provide an alternative to the patriarchal ideal of individualism in addition to providing a support structure for women artists. Today's panel includes discussions on feminist curatorial initiatives, both in exhibition spaces and in the development of a publication. Another panel will address the ways in which feminist artists and curators have worked to undermine institutional structures. And we'll also hear from a number of initiatives in which activist intentions brought collective action. Another set of presentations will question the role of labor and efficacy of collaboration in today's world. We'll have a wonderful collaboration performance in the afternoon after lunch, um, and the day will close with an artist roundtable discussion on issues including process, authorship, and produced knowledges in collective practices. We would, like, we would like to thank the Feminist Art Project, and especially Connie Tell for her amazing organization and guidance in pulling, together, pulling today's event together. We are grateful to the Museum of Arts and Design for hosting the Day of Panels, and especially Jake Usna, MAD's Director of Public Programs. Finally, we would like to thank our panel chairs, Calliope Minudaki, Susan B. and Mira Shore, Kat Griefen and Meredith Brown, Nina Felshin, Catherine Behar, and Dalita Maria Be Benfield, as well as our performance by Jamie Uretsky and Emily Dix Thomas this afternoon. And thank you all for coming.